In this video, we will be solving this question, which says Tommy Twit is happiest when he has eight cookies and four glasses of milk per day. Whenever he has more than his favorite amount of either food, giving him still more makes him worse off. Whenever he has less than his favorite amount of either food, giving him more makes him better off. His mother makes him drink seven glasses of milk and only allows him two cookies per day. One day when his mother was gone, Tommy's sadistic sister made him eat 13 cookies and only gave him one glass of milk. Despite the fact that Tommy complained bitterly about the last five cookies that she made him eat and begged for more milk. Although Tommy complained later to his mother, he had to admit that he liked the diet that his sister forced on him better than what his mother demanded. Demanded. So with this information, we are asked, use black ink to draw some indifference curve for Tommy that are consistent with this story. Now note that in the question we are given that Tommy is happiest when he has 8 cookies and 4 glasses of milk per day. That means th this is his favorite combination. And whenever you have a favorite combination, that is nothing but your bliss point. So let's quickly revise what do you mean by bliss point. We sometimes want to consider a situation involving situation where there is some overall best bundle for the consumer. And the closer he is to that best bundle, the better off he is in term of his own preferences. So for example, suppose that consumer has some most preferred bundle of goods that is x1 bar and x2 bar and the farther away he is from that bundle, the worse off he is. In this case, we say that the combination bundle x1 bar and x2 bar is a situation point or a bliss point. So here on the x-axis you have good x1 and on the y-axis you have good x2. And this black dot represents the best point or your bliss point or your situation point which corresponds to the combination of x1 bar and x2 bar. And also the indifference curves surround this point and the arrows depict the preference direction. Also the points farther away from this bliss point lie on the lower indifference curve. So that means the point lying on this indifference curve would give the consumer lower level of satisfaction as compared to the point on this indifference curve. Now one more thing to note here is that though the indifference curves surround the point there is no such compulsion that they have to be in a circular form. They can take any shape based on the preferences of the consumer. It's just whenever the consumer has a bliss point your indifference curve will surround this point and the shape will vary which you will see as we progress along this question. So after learning about the bliss point let's draw the indifference curve for Tommy. Here you have this graph where on the x-axis you have cookies and on the y-axis you have milk and Tommy is happiest when he has 8 cookies and 4 glasses of milk that is this is his bliss point which is denoted by this red dot and if we want to draw the indifference curve then the indifference curve would be surrounding this point and hence they would look like this. Since no f more information about Tommy's preferences are given that's why I have drawn the indifference curve in a circular shape. You could have drawn the indifference curve like this as well or this or proper circle or oval shape. It's just keep in mind that your indifference curve should sh surround the bliss point. And in the question it's also given to us that his mother makes him drink 7 glasses of milk and only allows him 2 cookies per day. And his sister make him eat 13 cookies and gave him only 1 glass of milk. So these bundles would lie here where this is your combination of 2 comma 7 and this is your 13 comma 1 as we have cookies on the x axis and milk on the y axis also Tommy complained to his mother he had to admit that he liked the diet that his sister forced on him better than what his mother demanded. So that means that this combination which corresponds to his sister should lie closer to the bliss point than this combination. For that let's draw the indifference curve passing through each of these points and see if that holds true or not. So if you draw the indifference curve they would look like this where this one is the indifference curve passing through the point 13 comma 1 and as we just learned 
and any point on this indifference curve would be closer to the bliss point as compared to the point on this indifference curve which has the combination of 2 comma 7 thus the indifference curve passing through the combination of 13 comma 1 which corresponds to his sister's diet will give him the higher level of satisfaction than the indifference curve passing through the point 2 comma 7 which corresponds to his mother's diet which validates the Tommy's preferences as depicted here. Let's move on to the next part which says Tommy's mother believes that the optimal amount for him to consume is 7 glasses of milk and 2 cookies. She measures the deviation by absolute values. So if Tommy consumes some other bundle says C, M, she measures his departure from the optimal bundle by D which is equal to modulus of 7 minus M plus modulus of 2 minus C. The larger the D is, the worse off she thinks Tommy is. So use the blue ink in the graph above to sketch a few of Mrs. Twit's indifference curves for Tommy's consumption. And we are also given a hint that before you try to draw the Mrs. Twit's indifference curve, we suggest that you take a piece of scrape paper and draw the graph of the locus of points x1, x2 such that modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1. So before jumping to the solution and drawing the indifference curve for Mrs. Twit's, Let's first draw this graph that is modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1. For that let's quickly revise the modulus function. So the value of the modulus function is always ne non-negative. If fx is a modulus function then we have fx is positive then your fx is equal to x. If x is equal to 0 then the function takes the value of 0 and if x is negative then your function takes the value of minus x which can be combined and written like this where fx is your modulus function and this can be opened up like this where it takes the positive value of x for when x is positive and it will be 0 when x is equal to 0 and it is negative when x is negative. Now let's draw the modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1. The modulus of x1 will open up like this where it is equal to x1 for x1 greater than or equal to 0 and minus x1 for x1 less than 0 and x2 would similarly open like this where it is equal to x2 for x2 greater than or equal to 0 and minus x2 for x2 less than 0. Now we have four values of x1 and x2 for four different ranges. So if we combine them we would get these four equations. And how are we getting this? Consider this equation. Now modulus of x1 would be equal to x1 for x1 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is x1 and it is equal to x2 for x2 greater than or equal to 0. Thus all we have to do is substitute this value into this equation. Thus we are able to get the equation as x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. But this only holds true when x1 is greater than or equal to 0 and x2 is also greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, if modulus of x1 is minus of x1 but your modulus of x2 remains x2 then you will get this equation by substituting it into this equation and this only holds true for x1 less than 0 and x2 greater than or equal to 0. Likewise, you will be able to get the remaining two equations. Now, after getting all these equations, let's plot it on the graph. So, consider this to be a xy plane where on the x-axis you have good x1 and on the y-axis you have good x2 and we will draw the axis along these conditions so your first condition would be so from this i would be able to get the condition as x1 is equal to 0 and from here i am able to get the equation as x2 is equal to 0 and these are nothing but your x and y axis so your cartesian plane remains the same as it is now these two conditions basically divides your uh, xy plane into four quadrants quadrants here your quadrants are just like your standard first second third and fourth quadrant but it could have been the case where your x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to minus 1 then if you draw the lines along this so which would be like this and this thus now these four are your new quadrants but in our case since x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0 these two are four quadrants that we would be dealing with so let's draw the graph we have the first equation as x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 when x1 is greater than 0 and x2 is greater than 0 so your initially your equation would look like this but since this equation only holds true for your first quadrant hence it should look like this likewise your minus x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 
holds true when x1 is negative and x2 is positive which is this quadrant hence the equation would look like this and similarly you can draw the equation for remaining two quadrants thus this kite like figure or your diamond shaped figure is the graph for your modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1 so the quick trick here is all you have to do is just split your graph into four quadrants based on the conditions you have and after that all you have to do is just just make the kite like shape and you would be able to get your desired graph for the condition the modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1 now let's come back to the question where we have to draw the graph for d is equal to modulus of 7 minus m plus modulus of 2 minus c let's first expand this graph and get the desired equation like we did before since we are not given a particular constant like this we just take randomly any constant it could be of your choice so that you're easily able to draw the figures i'm just taking the constant to be capital c in this particular case so now your modulus values would open like this where modulus of 7 minus m equal to so for that you have to do is modulus of 7 minus m that is take the interior component and it will be positive when 7 is greater than m or m is less than 7 so you would have the positive value of 7 minus m for m less than 7 likewise you will have the negative value when m is greater than 7 and similarly this opens up as positive of 2 minus c when c is less than 2 and negative of 2 minus c when c is greater than 2 now let's take all these values and substitute into this equation get your equation so that you're easily able to draw your graph which would look like this so let's first work with this condition where modulus of 7 minus m is positive of 7 minus m and modulus of 2 minus c is positive of 2 minus c for the conditions m less than 7 and c less than 2 and all you have to do is just substitute this value into this equation so that would be 7 minus m plus 2 minus c is equal to capital c which becomes 9 minus m minus c is equal to capital c keeping constants on one side and the variables on the one side here your c was constant that's why it is clubbed with 9 which is again a constant which gives us 9 minus c is equal to m plus c and this 9 minus c can be written as some other constant which is equal to a so your final equation becomes m plus c is equal to a for m less than 7 and c less than 2 likewise you would be able to get the remaining three equations for different values of constants which would be represented by d, b d and e now note that here we have the conditions as m is greater than 7 and m is less than 7 which gives us one condition as m is equal equal to 7 so that we are able to split a Cartesian plane into the four desired quadrants and he from here we get the condition as c is equal to 2 so let's first split the quadrant on the x-axis we have cookies which is denoted by c and on the y-axis we have milk and these are the combinations for Tommy now here let's first draw these two conditions which would look like this thus now you have these four quadrants with yourself so now all you have to do is just draw the diamond like shape like we did in the previous case when we were drawing modulus of x1 plus modulus of x2 is equal to 1 and if you see that these equations have essentially turned out just like the equations we got when we opened this function so your graph would look like this which is nothing but kite or diamond shape figure along this quadrant and similarly if you draw the multiple indifference curve which would look like this note here that i have cropped the indifference curve along the y-axis as your x cannot be negative since we are assuming that the commodities are always positive thus this di diamond shape figures are the indifference curve for mrs twit now one more thing to note here is that since we are drawing the, the indifference curve for tommy's mother she considered this combination to be his best combination that's why we have considered the point 2 comma 7 to be his bliss point and have drawn the indifference curves surrounding this particular point but there is a very big difference between this these indifference curves and the previous one here these indifference curve have a particular shape they have a kite like shape or a diamond like shape but in previous case when we drew the indifference curve for tommy they were basically simple circular shapes 
so that's why in the beginning i stressed upon the point that shape of indifference curve would be depicted by the preferences but since we are dealing with the bliss point your indifference curve has to surround the bliss point and the shape would be governed by the preferences that's why in the previous case we had circular indifference curve because we weren't given much information about the tommy's preferences here we have much detailed information about the tommy's mother preferences as she measures the deviation in absolute value so be very careful about these small things which could make a huge difference